Hi, first off, I wanted to say thank you so much for the lovely introduction and um, thank you so much to IDC for having me here and thank you to Fulbright for providing the opportunity for me to conduct this research. Thank you so much in particular to Professor Sri Kumar, who's my guide in this project. So ideology and typography, visions of the future and transportation signage in Mumbai. That's kind of a mouthful. But this is, this is what I study. This is the object of, this, of um, my study during this time. So I'm looking at the signs of the Reliance Mumbai Metro. The metro was opened in 2013, in this past year in July, so in July 2014. Uh, it's the first line, and two other lines are planned to my knowledge. I think there might be a third. So I was studying, I was curious about the typography specifically because to me it seemed like quite a departure from the sorts of signs that exist in the city already. So we've talked a little bit about this so far during, during these presentations, but um, contemporary language is mediated by typography. And what I mean by that is that when we are reading and writing to each other, increasingly we don't use, you know, we don't write to each other by hand. We, we use, you know, I get an SMS from my mom. I don't get a note, a handwritten note. So typography encases these words that we read in modern times. So typography is ideological. And not so much in the sense that there are many hidden meanings within typography but more that typography helps shape the world that we live in. It helps us give us a sense of the way things are, the way things are in this. <laughs> uh, so here is the, so as a part of the study, I, I was curious about existing signs here in Mumbai. Um, so I was looking at railway signage, signboards in particular, and the hand, the hand painted signs. So I went around taking a lot of photographs, looking really weird, um, taking photos with my huge camera. And uh, so here are some photos of the signboards here in Mumbai. You have two big railway companies. Um, you have the Central Railway, which oper operates the Central and Harbor Lines. And you have the Western Railway, but we'll get to that later. So in the Central Line, the, the middle portion of the sign is in Hindi. Above, you have Marathi, and below, you have English. And um, to talk about the typography specifically, um, all these are pretty high contrast, not perfectly consistent. And um, I'm sure as many of you would say not the best examples of lettering. But the reality is that's, what they're, that's what's there. So worth examining so, solely for that sake. When it comes to the Western Railway, we have three different kinds of signs at every station. So you have one with English in the middle, one with Marathi in the middle, and one with Hindi in the middle. And um, you also have the other two languages above and below. So three languages, three different kinds of signs at every station. And I found on the Western Railway there's a lot, a lot more variation in the lettering, but we'll talk about that later. So here are the best bus signs, if you can see them just for some, just a few, just to give you an idea. Similarly modulated, um, not quite as high contrast, but certainly hand-painted Devnagri there. And then here are all of the signs of the Reliance Metro, just to give you an idea. Uh, they are perfectly the same because they are digitally reproduced. And they are, you have this, these Metro tendrils, which are the brand components there. Um, and you actually don't have any Hindi on these signs. It's Marathi only. At least that's what I'm judging by the spelling. So all you Marathi speakers out there can come talk to me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so here is the metro sign itself, just looking at the typography. Um, the Deep Nagari is in Sri Lippi 0715, part of the enormous Sri Lippi package. And um, Azad Nagar is in universe. The Latin is in universe Roman. Um, these are monolinear. I would say that the the weights don't match. When we look at them like this, the weights aren't aren't perfectly matched. Um, the name Nagri feels a little bit heavier. And here is a, a sign from the Western Line from the Bandra Station. Um, you see the the Dave Nagri is very high contrast, while the uh, Latin is actually a condensed sans serif, which is interesting. Um, there's you can see that the, there's been more of an attempt to match the Devnagri and the Latin 
in the, for comparison, in the metro sign. Um, interestingly, the Devanagari also shows an influence from what I would consider an influence from typography, because the half form is not connected to, to the the, the na and the da are not completely um, connected to each other, which is interesting, and you see this a, a lot in railway signs. Here's the bus, just to, the best bus, just for, for comparison. Again, similarly modulated, um, but not quite as high contrast. So here are the variations within one station, just to give you an idea of how much variation is going on. Um, I like that Villa Parla sign because it's this, the bare bones seem very similar, it just seems fatter on the bottom. And um, in car, you see like those are two completely different sorts of styles of lettering, but they exist within the same station. Um, you know, the, the, everything is different. The contrast, the weight, um, the kana height, you know, the flourishes, everything is different about those two signs. So this points to a lot of painters working over a period of time, um, kind of contracted out as need be. So these are the biggest differences that I found in my study between the metro signs and the railway signs. Um, in particular, the metro signs are, the typography of the metro signs, I should say, is monolinear, digital, branded, and authored, and we'll get into that. So I don't really have to explain what monolinear is to an audience like this, but um, essentially monolinear typefaces, we talked a little bit about the feelings of that typefaces give us earlier, but they feel more, they feel more efficient, they feel more modern. Um, and the reality is that they're easier to match to Latin because they don't, you don't have to deal with the issue of a reversed pen angle, which we also talked about. In general, a more contemporary feeling. Um, but studies have shown that readers of Devanagari are generally more comfortable reading um, this modulated or calligraphic kind of Devanagari. Although the same could be said of English speakers, of Latin, people who use a Latin script who prefer serif typefaces, so tradition prevails. Digital, so these typefaces use on the metro are digital typefaces, um, but that means that they're perfectly reproducible. So the same sign could be made in Berlin, it could be the exact same sign. And it can be shared, these typefaces can be shared across a large identity to ensure that the type remains the same, that you get the, a perfect transmission of the typography. Uh, these signs are also branded. <clears throat> so these little wavy guys are part of the Reliance branding scheme. So these typefaces are brand typefaces, and they ensure a consistent, what a brand does is it ensures a, a consistent delivery of a message. But more than that, it helps frame this as an object within Reliance's larger portfolio of products and services. So uh, it inherently changes the relationship between a viewer and the sign, if the typography used on the sign is brand typography. Certainly you can't have this sort of, there's no such thing as brand lettering. <laughs> you can't have a sign painter. I guess you could, that could be interesting. Let's talk later. Um, these, finally, these typefaces are authored. So although this is really debatable for the Sri Lippi typeface, um, but the designers of typography are identifiable, while the makers of lettering have historically not been, it's not been important to record their work in the same sort of way that we record the work of type designers. So, yeah, this is a, it's a big shift. It's, um, if we think about the history of India, this relationship towards authored objects is very new, it's very different. Many, um, historically many, many works of art and design in India have remained unauthored. So here are two outliers, which I think are really interesting. Um, that Bandra sign on the right is a sticker. So it was digitally made and then stuck up, which points to a use of digital typography that's a little bit more rogue than a complete signage system, the way that, that the metro is employed. Yeah, it points, it could, it's just a, a potential possibility. Not the best digital typography, but a use that's different than a, than a system-wide sort of implementation. And then over here on the left, 
That is Urdu right there. That is Urdu picking out underneath in this um, Sevri sign. So that really points to the mutability of painted signs in the sense that someone can come in and change them if need be. I, this is the only place I've seen this. If you've seen any other signs like this, please let me know. I would love to see them. Um, but clearly someone in the community, be it the person who managed the station or the sign painter thought that that was important to include this language as a part of this sign. So what does this say about the future of signage typography in Mumbai? We can, we can, this typography that is existing on the metro signs currently is starting to resemble typography that we see all across the country. Um, you know, it's, it's a perfect, it's a perfectly executed, perfectly replicated system. Um, and it means that you'll have a little bit of loss of locality, um, but you'll have more efficiency. I don't know. There's, I'm not really here to pass judgment. Um, I'm just here to observe. Thank you very much.